You know, sometimes when you face a hard level and you decide you will take a break before continuing, or when you play a game and you like it so much that you want to replay it. However, when you do so, it's not the same experience as you remember. Like you remember that after defeating that certain boss, you turn left. But now, there are no left doors. Now, these games offer the players a lot of fun, since they are sure they will never literally finish the game, as each time they play, the map is different and they will have a new experience. So in this series of tutorials, we will be creating a random level generation system, which when applied to your game will ensure that players will like it more and will return to play it again and again. I just want to state here that this will not be a single video, but it will be a series in which we will cover different types of random generation, like random map generation, random dungeon style generation, and random full level generation. Now, without wasting any more time, let's dive into it. We'll start by creating an empty game object. This will act as a placeholder for our game components. So we will give it a gizmos, such that we will be able to locate it in the scene. And then we will duplicate it randomly around the scene. After that, we will create another empty game object. This time we will call it map generator. Then we will create a C sharp script, also called map generator. Inside the script, we will start by removing both of our update and star functions as we will not be using any of them. Instead, we will declare a public transform array called locations followed by another public game object array called components after that we will create an awake function inside which we will start a for loop so for integer i is equal to 0 and that i shall always be less than or equal to our locations dot length and it shall only be increasing by an increment of 1 inside this loop we want to create another integer called s and we will set it to take a random value ranging between 0 and our components dot lens then once this integer takes its value we will need to instantiate a component which has the order s at our current position so locations of order i dot position with no rotation so quaternion dot identity now saving the script and jumping back to unity we will add the script to our map generator log the inspector and then drag and drop all of our placeholders into the locations array We'll do the same to our game components brief apps. And now whenever you start the game, you will see that it has a different map. If you learned something new today, please give the video a thumbs up, share it with any friends, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is the Gamesmith, and as usual, see you in the next one.